Hi, in this video we're going to look at some higher yielding exchange traded funds. We're going to look at Vanguard, we're going to look at a quality dividend one from Wisdom Tree and also one from Van Eck as well. So the overview is, well what are these products, what are their fees, what do they invest in, how should I select the best one, how have they performed over the last one, three, five years and what might the near term outlook be. Living off dividends is tough. This is the ETF IUKD, so it's the UK FTSE 350 Top 50 Dividend Payers. Launched in 2005, first full year 2006. First three years it grew its dividend. Sounds great, let's put my money in it, this is amazing. It loaded up on banks, then we had the global financial crisis and the share price and the dividends just went off a cliff. And it's never recovered from that 2008 high point. And it's also never recovered from uh, 2020 and COVID. So 2018 was a better year for dividends for it than 2022. So if you're going to live off dividends, back test your strategy. Look at a long term history of what's been going on. Would it actually work out for you? So first up, Vanguard High Yield. What is it? Well, it tracks a all world high dividend yield index. So that includes emerging markets. It ignores real estate investment trusts and it ignores stocks that are forecast to pay a zero dividend over the next 12 months. And of the rest, it ranks them according to dividend yield and includes them until it's reached 50% of the market cap of the whole universe of larger cap all world companies. So here are the top holdings. Number one, ExxonMobil. Then it's got some good ones in there. Johnson Johnson I like. Procter & Gamble I think is good. Nestle, not bad. 1,844 holdings in all. Claims the PE ratio is only 11.2, so that's pretty good. Uh, good weighting to the US, so it's fairly close to a global tracker. It's not diver diverging too much. Um, it is pretty overweight in financials, but at the moment, Financials are actually quite a good value sector to be in and they're going through a bit of a recovery. Quite a lot of holdings as well. What is Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth? Well, it kind of does what it says on the tin. So it looks for companies that have the ability to grow dividends, have certain quality metrics, um, also apparently have a bit of price momentum behind them as well. Uh, the problem here is that Wisdom Tree have come up with their own index, which is a bit opaque in terms of the methodology. Um, but the best thing to do is just to look at, let's look at some of the companies that it holds. So it says things like Microsoft and Apple have grown their dividends and they have cash reserves to pay dividends going forwards into the future. So it likes them. And then we see some of the old favorites in here with things like Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble. Good weighting to the US again, Switzerland number two, which is interesting. Uh, information technology number one sector. So uh, this again is quite close to a global tracker. It's just ignoring things like Tesla um, yeah, and all that kind of rubbish. Uh, unfortunately, the price to earnings is nearly 19, so it's pretty high. Uh, quite diversified, 600 holdings, bit of a higher fee at 0.38%. Next up, Vanguard Morningstar Dividend Leaders. This is only 100 companies and uh, the highest weightings can be around about 5%. So it looks at the top 100 companies based on how they're paying out dividends. So it looks at the total dividend payment. Um, you've got some quite large, uh, you've got banks in there, you've got some energy in there. Um, when we look here, what's interesting is quite a low weighting to the US and a bit odd that France is number two. Strong weighted to financials because again, that's doing pretty well. Very low PE ratio, I almost don't trust it, it's so low at eight. Uh, expense ratio again at 0.38 and just 100 holdings. So the performance of the Vanguard high yield ETF has pretty much mirrored the Investment Association Global Equity Income Benchmark 
over five years. It's just a bit behind. It's sometimes been in the second quartile. Uh, over five years, it's in the third quartile. So it's not that great for people that keep saying, oh, passive funds easily beat the active funds. Well, this one hasn't really done it. Now, if we look at the ETFs over one year and then also throw in a global tracker into the mix as well. So over one year, they've actually all outperformed the global tracker and the Vanek is coming out on top, but the Vanek is the least diversified. So you get more volatility, you'll get more swings of what well, it's doing well because banks are doing well, that kind of thing. Over three years, perhaps a better metric here, we've got Wisdom Tree quality dividend growth coming out at number one. Van Eck is making a bit of a surge at the last minute to be number two. Tracker is number three and Vanguard is last. Now, if we look over five years, it's uh, it's Wisdom Tree number one, Tracker number two, Van Eck number three and Vanguard number four. And there's quite a difference between the two that are more focused on the higher yield and the, the quality factor and the index tracker. So this is looking at the dividend history. So they've all been set to 100 for the year 2017. And then we've got the growth going forwards. And then we also got the current yields there at the top. So as you'd expect, Wisdom Tree has grown its dividends by the most, but the yield is the lowest. Um, Van Eck has done pretty well as well in terms of growth. Uh, that might be more just a sort of a sectoral switch towards energy that is paying out high dividends at the moment. So my conclusion is that Van Eck is the least diversified and therefore it's the more prone to volatility. So current strong performance could see a reversal in the near future. Vanguard is the most diversified the only one to include emerging markets. But over the medium term, it is the worst performer. Wisdom Tree have constructed their own index, which means it lacks independence and the PE ratio is kind of on the high side. Of these dividend ETFs, I would choose Wisdom Tree because it provides a balance between kind of mimicking a global tracker, but then avoiding things like Tesla and Meta and focusing a bit more on companies that I like, such as Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble. So if that kind of interests you, I would look to research the Wisdom Tree ETF in a bit more detail. And finally, don't be a Vanguard Muppet. Just because it says Vanguard on the tin doesn't mean it's great. And instead, why don't you watch this video coming up, like this video, and subscribe to the channel.